Hey apes, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. The final lecture for Heart of Darkness. Let's just get right into it. Uh, this is not going to be a terribly long video. Um, there's not a ton of stuff. Not a ton of stuff that we need to talk about um, in part three. He is going out of the heart of darkness. Um, let's start on page 50 uh, of the Dover Thrift Edition. And uh, down at the bottom of the page, he's uh, still talking to the Harlequin. Just one more of those really important statements from the Harlequin. He made me see things. Things. It makes me think back uh, to the beginning of the book when... Um, Marlowe meets those two women uh, at the medical, at the doctor, uh, the two women that were knitting the black wool. I wonder what things they saw and if they were the same things that the Harlequin's seeing. Okay, next, let's talk about on page 52 of the Dover Thrift Edition. Down at the bottom, uh, we have the knobs that are on the sticks around... Uh, <coughs> Sorry about that. My daughter is really excited about uh, these these heads on sticks because that's what they are. They aren't knobs like they they uh, described earlier. But let's start reading. Uh, it's down at the bottom, page 52. These round knobs were not ornamental but symbolic. They were expressive and puzzling, striking and disturbing, food for thought and also for the vultures, if there had been any, looking down from the sky. But at all events, for such ants as were industrious enough to ascend the pole, they would have been even more impressive, those heads on stakes, if their faces had not been turned to the house. Only one, the first I had made out, was facing my way. We have these sticks, we have heads on top of them, and all of them are faced in, Looking at Kurtz's hut except one. I think that's symbolic, and we can talk about that more in the discussion thread. Then let's turn to page 54 and 55. It's down at the very bottom, page 54. This is when uh, Kurtz gets brought in on a stretcher, and it starts, Well, the name was as true. So let's read just a, a, a section. Well, the name was as true as everything else in his life and death. He looked at least seven feet long. His covering had fallen off and his body emerged from it pitiful and appalling as from a wi winding sheet. I could see the cage of his ribs all astir, the bones of his arms waving. It was as though an animated image of death carved out of old ivory had been shaking its hand with menaces at the motionless crowd of men made of dark and glittering bronze. I saw him open his mouth wide. It gave him a weirdly voracious aspect, as though he wanted to swallow all the air, all the earth, all the men before him. A deep voice reached me faintly. He must have been shouting. He fell back suddenly. The stretcher shook as the bearer staggered forward again, and almost at the same time I noticed that the crowd of savages was vanishing without any perceptible movement of retreat, as if the forest had ejected these beings so suddenly had draw them in again as the breath is drawn in a long aspiration. This is a beautiful passage. Uh, this is the first time we see Kurtz. He's brought out of the jungle, and he just looks sick, and he looks, uh, you know, just like sunken and, and swallowed. Every essence of life in him has been taken out. Uh, you know, he's close to death. I think that we can talk about, you know, why he looks like death personified and what happened to Kurtz to make him this way. And is that going to happen to Marlowe, you know? Next, let's turn to page 57. It's about halfway down the page. Um, really short passage. Uh, I've highlighted it on the screen. It says, My hour of favor was over. I found myself lumped along with Kurtz as a partisan of methods for which the time was not ripe. I was unsound. Ah, but it was something to have at least a choice of nightmares. I think that last statements, it was at least something to have a choice of nightmares, was nice. And the fact that he says, I was unsound. We can discuss that. Uh, Marlowe's unsoundness in the discussion. And finally, the last passage I want to call to your attention, uh, other than the close reading passages, um, are what I call the ultimate pages in um, the Heart of Darkness. They are on page 64 and 65, and then a little bit onto page 66 um, in the Dover Thrift Edition. These are the most important pages in the entire novella. 
Um, it starts with his was an impenetrable darkness, and this is where they have Kurtz on the ship. He's getting you know really really sick. He's being taken away from the heart of darkness, and I think there's something symbolic in that with him as he moves away from it. He gets worse and worse and worse, and then he dies. And um, his last words are so. His final words are so symbolic and so ominous. The horror. The horror. And we can talk in the discussion what we think, what is the horror? What does he mean? Um, you know, there can be a lot of interpretations in that. And then, you know, the he leaves. Um, Marlowe blows the candle out, which is super symbolic, and then leaves. And then the pilgrims have to come in and find Mr. Kurt. And then he comes in and says, Mr. Kurtz, he did. And, uh, like, Marlowe symbolically wants to stay in the light during this scene. And, there's just so much depth on these three pages. Um, really study them closely, and then well, we can talk about them in um, the discussion thread. I think we'll have a really deep, rich discussion about this. So this is it. That's the end of Heart of Darkness. Those are the passages that um, I think are of most import in part three of Heart of Darkness. Go ahead and go into the discussion thread and talk. I'll see you in our last close reading video, and then we'll be done with Heart of Darkness. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye, apes.